The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. I don't have anything in my ears. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now up four. NASDAQ up 102. S&P's up uh, 10. Gold contract up $9. Trading out at 19.05 an ounce. We get silver up six cents, $23.55 an ounce. Light sweet crude. Man, that's getting smoked. Down a buck 35, trading at 38.89. We get the euro out. Uh, we get the uh, notes and bonds. You get the 10 year note down five ticks, 139.11. The 30-year are 15 at 175.26 and King Dollar. King Dollar down 29 ticks, trading 93.855. The euro is at 117. The yen is out here at 105.68. And the British pound is at 128 to 1 US dollar. Tom O'Brien, what's going on? We got a lot going on. We got fast markets, man. Um, and we'll find out probably today, uh, one way or the other, the potential for that stimulus deal. I think the market really waiting for it. There was a lot of optimism over, overnight, man. And uh, a lot of it just waned pretty quickly on the open. It was. And what you had out here, folks, is was some big divergence. And that divergence, uh, bottom line, had to do with uh, where the European markets were when our S&Ps were up uh, that uh, full 30%. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of swim as you do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand the option market, option strategies, futures, outstanding program. If you haven't test-driven yet, the Think of Swim platform so easy to do. You're sitting on our website at TFNN. Just hit the banner. Bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money. You can call, follow Kevin and his team every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Guys, welcome to the month of October. And, Tommy, to follow up on your point, more importantly, welcome to brinksmanship. Yeah, That's what right. you're seeing right now. I think this, you know, traders, as we know, you are forced to become a student of human behavior. And human behavior tells us, that legislators like to go right up to the brink, and then they will make a deal of some kind. So I think that's what you're seeing right now. I think that's why you're seeing some, some cautious continuation to yesterday's rally. But here we are, guys. Yeah. And, you know, if you, as Kevin's speaking here, folks, okay, if you go back in history, the market can not only give all of us a backhand, uh, they can give the, bat, the politicians a real sweet backhand. I mean, remember in 2007, 2008, Kevin, that, oh, I yeah. think it was, that you know, the politicians didn't do a deal, folks. When they didn't do the deal, the, the Dow went down 900 points. Then they finally did it, and then went up 1,000 the next day, man. I mean, that was like right. just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. And there's all, you know, I, I think it's, really important that this stimulus package target the right areas airlines hotels restaurants small businesses and then checks in the pocket of the u.s consumer to get them through this coronavirus and to the other side and if they do that i think the markets will look very favorably on it and you may start to see some elevated numbers in things like jobless claims and things like that. We had 837,000 today. This 800 handle on jobless claims has proven to be pretty stingy in terms of we're, we're kind of pausing here. We made some good incremental progress today, but still, this 800,000 level is not a level you want to hang out at for very long, guys. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, so uh, let's talk a little bit about Pepsi. You know, I was listening to the show yesterday, yep. and I mean, the bottom line is that, you know, this is where, you know, if you can just Fill the, uh, the listeners in, Kevin. I mean, this is where when I was listening to you, and I, I know this before, that you were a specialist for Pepsi. Um, you know, they had great numbers, and you were talking yeah. about yesterday that they never get a lot of movement when they come out with numbers, huh? Right, exactly. And so 
all the all the data that would line up to a normal trader looking at Pepsi yeah. might say, wow, this move is a little under for what Pepsi can do, and maybe the iron condors are trading a little cheap. So what, what does that mean? Well, one great thing that shows up in your P&L is familiarity with a stock and understanding that Pepsi just doesn't move off of their earnings reports. Right. It just never has a history of moving. And I've traded Pepsi since 1986, and it just doesn't do it. And so here we are. We traded an iron counter that was a little less premium than we'd like to get. That said, it's going to be wildly profitable this morning. Yeah. As we're getting a move way inside the expected move, guys. And, you know, it's amazing how many snacks that we eat, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. and, they were, yeah. and it was a great segment. Everything I was listening that too, ends and they, in Edo. Yeah. Cheetos, Doritos, Tostitos. Salty and, snacks are very important, guys. And, what, what, Tommy, <laughs> at your show this morning, what was it you're saying? They're making a new product? They're, they're putting two of them they, together? What are they doing? They're making yeah. Cheetos mac and cheese, I believe. <laughs> I love it. I it, love it. And that's now, what I was joking, Kevin. I said, you know, if Cheetos, Doritos, flavored. and Tostitos are working so well, and mac and cheese is selling off the shelves, um, they, they, they came together for the two of them as they're going to push that one out. <laughs> exactly right. And that is Cheetos-flavored macaroni and cheese so it's pasta but it tastes like cheetos and their ceo was on this morning talking about they can't make enough the biggest oh, cool. problem right now is getting supply to, to their sellers it's amazing hey let me sw switch gears with you for a second kevin i know you, you trade the soybean mail but just the, the beans yesterday went ballistic man and, and you know it's, this is going to get intriguing to see like what's happening with these soft commodities man you know, you know, the grain market is very uh, tied to the U.S. dollar as a macroeconomic uh, discussion. But, yeah, now, I mean, I'm looking at the beans now, 1026. That's a significant rally in I these know. beans. You've got meal up to 347.40. I mean, I mean, that is, you know, that is an end of the summer realization. And, we, and you know, and we've had some warm, dry weather in the Midwest. Right. So. Yeah, this is a pretty significant rally down from, you know, below nine dollars to over ten now. So Right. Yeah, and it's harvest right. time too, right. Nice so that, that's of kind of intriguing, you know, that you have we know that we have a lot of lot out there, but guess what? The bottom line is that evidently there's not enough right now. Right. And and you know, it looks like the US and China are still trading green yeah. with each other. Yeah. So that's and, you know, remember China puts the demand in commodities right? right the u.s has supply but china is the variable in demand so yeah i mean it, it, you're right tom this has been quite a run in soybeans in soybean meal in it looks like yeah corn has not gone up as much but still very, very strong driving to new highs today so yeah big moves in in the grain the last oh since we'll call it uh you know the middle of august yeah, no, I, I like those moves, man. Totally. Listen, folks, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. Have a great weekend. We look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. Always a pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank Thanks, you. Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 37, NASDAQ up 91, S&P's up 9.5. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now up 68. You get the NASDAQ up 95. S&P's up 12 and a half. And uh, you get some good volatility out here, Tom. Yeah. The whole thing is so interesting, just trying to break down the different um, influences that all the politicians have, political season, constituents, yeah. um, and, and the economy and everything going on um, in terms of the two different forces trying to make a deal in there and where that deal comes out. And if it comes out, um, and that's why you're seeing the market a little unsure as they try and figure out all the probabilities and then how things react in terms of what is going to be included in there, of course. Right. And, you know, the, the airlines, okay, you know, the airlines, bottom line now, are free to lay people off. Um, when I was listening to your program this morning, you know, the, the bottom line is that, and this is pretty amazing, folks, when you really think about it. I mean, and, I mean the airlines have taken us to the cleanest forever, okay? Yeah. And, you know, the, the real question is, is that I think you brought up too big to fail, and I think they are, Tom. I think, that, I think this is the next group. That, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, we, we knew the banking structure is too big to fail. Once they figured that out, they can get away with murder on a continual basis and just basically, you know, keep sweeping cash and not saving anything for a rainy day. Now, the airlines are the ultimate of that, okay? The, I mean, American Airlines has gone bankrupt five times, <laughs> okay? Yeah, I mean, if, if, you know, we as a society, and you need airlines, you need travel to, to facilitate commerce, right? So... You're going to have to bail them out because it's in the best interest for everybody to bail them out. So as a result of that, then you have to consider what happens that if we're forced to bail them out, if they lose it, that that creates this, you know, weird incentive for them to really not be as worried as they should be to have capital to prevent from failing. Exactly. Because in any other, you know, capitalist society, businesses take too much risk, don't keep money on hand for a, a catastrophic event like this, right? which, yes, it's pretty catastrophic, but we've had terrorist attacks, you know, to put things very bluntly, that oh, yeah. dried up travel dramatically for them to not even consider the idea that somehow, you know, traffic could dry up dramatically and just hand out money. So maybe they have to keep a certain amount of their profits on reserve if that's the deal. I mean, there's ways to facilitate that, still have them be a company. I mean, you see restrictions put on businesses all the time like that. 
if you're in a regulated they, environment, which if you have to bail them out continually. Right, they almost got to, they, they really got to get regulations in, and they almost got to make them like a utility. That's the bottom line. I mean, if they're going to basically come back to the, you know, each taxpayer every single time something goes on, the bottom line is that it should be a utility versus, you know, basically a, a structured company for profit. You know what I mean? Because the, 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 the reality of the deal is that you have Congress trying to make a deal, right? And as Kevin Hanks said, I say, we, we need airlines to facilitate people to travel around the country oh, yeah. to facilitate commerce, okay? We need that. Um, but at the same time, you have these businesses that literally are saying, if you pass this legislation, we're, we're going to lay off tens of thousands of people unless you pass a bill to give us money right so like they they're literally saying that so oh, yeah. that's the context that you have to you know that literally it's like they've already put the number out of people that are going to lose their job unless they get government money literally right now exactly so that's that's quite a contextual place to to be a private business and to to try and put that on the government right um when really they had a lot of money in a lot of ripe times um oh, now yeah so and they nickel degree. and dime us to death that turn in, turns yeah. into like 150 to 200 dollars a ticket folks okay so they yeah. figured out the business plan man in terms of you yeah. know fares and nickel and diming everything to the tune of massive profits over the last 10 12 years exactly now yeah. check this out folks okay not that you, you don't want to get involved in this but check this out this is gonna you know everything that uh well let me read it first and then, then you'll see what has happened folks is that everything that used to be one meaning a whole is getting chopped up. And in this particular case, this one is a beauty, man. This is like so far over the top, it's unbelievable. As pandemic boasts suburban home demand, startup sells a new ownership model. So check it out. Uh, I think the new we need ownership your screen. As... I'm sorry, go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry, I think we, we need your screen in the den. I'm sure they oh, have that maybe would be on nice. Tiger, yeah, that would be nice. Tiger TV. Let's see, since I'm talking about it, yes. Okay, so there we go. Okay, Thanks. so. This is called Picasso, folks. It's a venture between two Zillow Group alumni and is oh. using the vacation model to sell ownership. Now, check it out. And weekend homes, okay? So, similar to traditional timeshare, which is the worst thing in the world, folks. Don't ever buy a timeshare in your life. You're going to lose money on a continual basis forever because there's no cap on the expenses. That being said, though, this is going to be more bizarre because uh, Piat. Uh, Pasco? Yeah. Um, how about, yeah. Uh, Picasso. Picasso. Picasso is going to give buyers the right to use a house a certain number of weeks a year, but where timeshares typically cluster and holiday hotspots like beach towns and mountain resorts, many of Picasso's homes are going to be located in suburbia and other residential neighborhoods. Uh, this is just not for Napa Valley, Santa Barbara, and fancy vacation destinations. Uh, said Spencer Reiskopf, uh, Zillow's uh, chief executive officer and co-founder. This is for a lake outside Detroit where maybe you've had your eye on getting a little lodge. The company is uh, looking in places like Austin, uh, Scottsdale. Uh, it's launching today with four homes, but the company aims to operate in 25 U.S. markets and expects to ramp up hundreds of homes from a, a year from now. Now here, this is the kicker. This is how they're going to be able to sell this, folks. But this is when people really don't understand, you know, what they're getting involved in. Uh, let's see. Where's the financing on this? They're going to, they're going to, they're going to uh, basically finance fifty percent of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't see so, that part. Republic Bank. Where is this? There you go. Is, do I have? Is it there somewhere? Yeah. There it is. Right in the middle. The company enables buyers to finance as much as fifty percent of their shares through a program with First Republic Bank. Unlike most time shares. Picasso's buyers actually obtain uh, partial ownership in the property. Folks, don't even don't even think about it, okay? Um, but it's pretty wild, right? You know, it's a great idea, though. I, I'm going through there looking at it, saying that's a great idea, man. From somebody that peruses Airbnb, um, you know, things are pretty expensive, and you know, your your our our tendencies, our habits are completely changing. Where you know, the idea of getting a place, especially right now over the next year, year and a half. Um, where you got your own deal going on. Maybe it's in the woods, maybe it's by the lake, right. man. I, I've had similar, you know, as opposed to going to a massive resort um, town or, or whatever it there, be. There's no doubt. I, yeah. I bet, you know, like when we get plenty of listeners out in Colorado, I mean, I bet there's a lot of action out in Colorado. They get so many, you know, natural reserves, uh, oh. U.S. Forest Services. Listen, I'll tell you, you I know. mean, personally, that, that's a, because of this. I mean, we were just looking at maybe going to up to maybe Tennessee, see some leaves, get yeah. a cabin, man, you know, I mean, it's not, you, you, because, 
you know, it's really tough to, to travel and be super social right now for, for what, you know, that's, that's, you know, you wear a mask, you clean your hands. I'm sure you can do it safely. You can fly safely, but it's just an unfortunate element to be aware of on vacation. Whereas there's so many other great things you can do like that. You're in the mountains, right? You're in the mountains. You're checking out the foliage, man, from somebody from the Northeast, you know, coming right. from Florida, you get some cool air. I mean, that's a great, if you're on the lake or something, it's literally exactly what they're talking about. So I'm sure I'm not the only one. No, that there's no doubt, man. There's no doubt. Yeah. Dow, Dow Industrials right now, uh, Dow, uh, up 24, Nasdaq's up 82, S&Ps are up 6. This is really a wild market, folks, because, um, you know, Europe was basically lower this morning. I mean, it gave it up. And you can see, uh, bottom line is that they're selling this market, man. In fact, when we come back, I'm going to bring up the S&Ps. I believe the S&P just tested the high of yesterday. Okay. Dow, Dow is up 13, Nasdaq's up 76, S&Ps are up 4.5. We'll come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 40. Nasdaq's up 85. S&Ps are up 8. And we got natural gas numbers out here, Tom, right? Let's see. Yeah. Natural gas. So let's see what we come up with here. Okay. Okay, we get stockpiles rose 76 BCF. I wonder what they were looking for. Yeah, and I got the contract up here. We're sitting at about 247 and... Uh no real reaction right off the bat. 
So we had traded from 258 uh, about 8 a.m. this morning. So trading a bit lower on the morning. We're down five pennies on the session technically. And maybe catching a bid by one penny or two pennies, um, but just kind of hanging in there. Well, when we talk about uh, actions and reactions, how about Bed Bath & Beyond, huh? Ooh, how about it, man? Talk wow. about... This is something. You know, in my head, seriously, there's, there's, I mean, that's that, their, their numbers, so they had earnings. Uh, they swung to, I think, a $200 million plus profit for the quarter. The, they were looking for a loss. They beat on revenue. Um, anytime you swing from a loss to $200 million re, uh, profit, excuse me, in the quarter, I mean, that could be their turnaround, you know, and they had same store sales that were positive. They were looking for negative same store sales. You know what? I'm going to pull up the article because it's uh, some strong numbers. So, Income rose to 217 million. Yeah, from a loss of 138 million a year ago. Okay, net fit, net sales were at 2.69 billion. They were supposed to come in at 2.6 billion. And here's a big one: same store sales rose six percent. Analysts had been looking for a decline of 2.1 wow. um, percent. So yeah, same store sales. You know, they. This anyway, is the, this I, is like Bed Bath and Beyond second time. Uh, you know, like they're like a cat with nine lives. I mean, we've we've gone from a price point of uh, what seventy nine dollars in the equity. Yeah. It hit three dollars and forty three cents. You came off that. Let me just bring this back further because I think this is the second get go get go on this baby. Yeah, look at this. Well, it's not even two thousand eight. Two thousand eight, it only went down to twenty one, then it got up to eighty, and then it got croaked. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, man. I mean, that's. Yeah. And, I, you know, if you if if I mean, obviously, they furnish the home, right? Um, they should be on fire right now. And, and yeah. maybe they figured it out. Maybe they figured it out quick enough to be able to use the online, decrease their costs, get rid of some of those stores. Um, and they do talk about in there because what they're doing. Um, let's see. So I was talking about it earlier in terms of the stores they had. OK, so as of August 29th, they have fourteen hundred and seventy six stores. They're going to close 200 of them over the next two years. 63 stores are closing during the third quarter. And of those 200 stores, they ran a, generated roughly a billion in revenue in annual sales. And they hope to replace 20% of that just by other stores right. or online. And kill all the expenses after the first yeah, initial so write-down. Yeah. You still get maybe a quarter of the revenue anyway without all of the, all of the expenses tied to it, right? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go take a look at that gold market out here. So uh, we have with gold, folks, is that uh, we got to a high out here today of uh, 1915. Year at 1905, we're going to need more volume in this baby. Um, you get 130,000 contracts right now, which is not that great. You know what happens, folks, in the gold market is that you have a substantial number of contracts that come in very early in the day. I mean, you know, we're open to, and the pits open at 1:30. Eastern time, but the bottom line is it needs some more. Now, that being said, what it's trying to do is get back inside this range, and the range is approximately 1908, you know, 1911. You know, we made it to 1915. Yesterday, you made it to 1908. You ended up closing at 1895. I mean, it's trying to get in there. If we go to the, and we take a look at the GDX, what we have with the GDX out here. Uh, it looks to me like this thing is building uh, ABC structure on the way up. You get a potential ABC structure on the way up. So it's going to be, uh, let's see, 3962. Oh, this would be cool today. We might have a little one out here today. And the volume is going to be enough. You know, we, we, we broke the 1962. You got the 1965, 66. You wrote, no, I'm, we broke the $39.62. We're at 39.26. You need volume of more than 16 million, but you can see we already did 4.4. So more than likely, you're going to have a confirmed ABC structure on the way up inside that market. Yeah. And of course, what that's going to have to do with folks is that go right over to that dollar again. It's just pretty amazing. This dollar just can't. It, it just does not like that. Uh, basically, 93.991 number. You know, we'll see whether it can basically get over it again today. We got down to the 93.527. You know, you're only a hundred, well, you're a couple of hundred ticks away from it right now, but it's going to be intriguing watching that thing shake out, no doubt. So the real question is, is that there's a, you know, announcement come out in the middle of the day out here today. Uh, is the announcement first that the, the 
airlines basically pull the cord and then sure. you get the announcement, right? Yeah, I imagine that they're going to want to get the announcement. So here's one of the variables in play, right, is the, the politics of the president and everybody. If if you get that deal now, number number one, Democrats want to have the vote either way. So I don't think you can just wait for the nighttime to decide whether you get an announcement between Mnuchin and Pelosi. Right. Because if Pelosi doesn't have a deal, she wants to schedule a vote by the night. OK, so there's one incentive for it to be earlier. The other incentive to be earlier is that the stocks are definitely going to go up. And I'm sure the politics of that would be great for Trump. It'd be great for everybody. But so there's an incentive to get it done within market hours, actually, for yes. um, for for an acceleration. So with that said, we have no idea. Right. You could get something delaying it until tomorrow. Um, it's possible. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, because what, if you look at what they both said, folks, um, when they left the meeting yesterday, the bottom line is that there there wasn't this rhetoric of, you know, division. In both cases, no. whether it was Pelosi and Mnuchin, they both said, hey, we're going to continue to talk. We think we can get a deal done. And that's the, yeah. that's the first maybe break part like of that. that is, I was just going to mention maybe part of it's on both sides. You have to make sure that if you're going to agree to something, you have to be able to, you know, Mnuchin has to make sure that Trump's going to sign off and that they're going to be able to work with Republicans in the Senate. Um, so maybe that's a one day both of them go to their side, see what they can come back with. Exactly. Um, that's what I was just, you know, because uh, I don't think Mnuchin can speak for the entire Republican Senate. Just like, you know, right. it's, it's not. So there has to be some getting your ducks in order. Um, no, there's no doubt. No yeah. doubt. Let's go inside the NDX 100 and see the strength versus the weakness out here. Uh, so out here today, you got NXPI is up by 3.8 percent. You got Sirius Satellite up by 3.5. Microchip technology is up 3.2, taken away from it. You got uh, Align Technologies is down 1.4, Moderna is off 1.2, and Cisco is down 1.1. Nothing really big there. Uh, inside the Dow, something must be hitting the Dow up here because the Dow just doesn't have any juice. And I see the oil stocks, interesting. Okay, so you get uh, Chevron's, nothing big really. Chevron, 10 negative points. Uh, Goldman, seven. Travelers, five. Uh, putting positive into it. Boeing, 28. Visa, 26. Salesforce, 20. It's interesting that there's nothing, there's nothing that stands out here inside that Dow, Tom. Right. Up no. or down? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow Industrial is up 159. NASDAQ up 124. S&P is up 21. We'll come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 170. Nasdaq's up 119. S&Ps are up 21. And we got Constellation Brands, Tom, right? They came out with some numbers here? They sure did. So we talk about this company a lot, Constellation. They have, of course, Corona Beer, some wines, Corona Seltzer. Um, so they had earnings at 262 a share, just ahead of the estimate of 261 Sales of $2.3 billion. Uh, top in the market was looking for about $2.2 billion. They did not provide guidance for the fiscal year 2021, probably what's bringing them down a bit today, down 1.3%. But pretty remarkable. I saw you looking at the article in there. Yeah. Um, and I know you have the numbers up there. I mean, $2.3 billion, strong numbers. But that they had, um, I'm trying to look forward to Yeah, I got it course. up again. There you go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, the. Six percent of the hard seltzer market, um, yeah. the number four spot, because that's such a big, that's 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 a huge market, man. Right. And they have their Corona seltzer. I don't drink a lot of it, but that is the one of the big reasons why beer companies are struggling so much. You get the hard seltzer, et cetera, many of those types of drinks. And then, and you then know, yeah, how about did you see the loss from Canopy? Thirty one million. Um, right. So a decent loss. But right in my head, when I look at it, when you when you when you're taking in two point three billion dollars, in 90 days, um, a loss of 30 million. As long as they get that part of their business in order, the returns could be pretty exponential. Right, because watch how this works accounting wise, folks. This is pretty cool because the, the market, I don't think, will pay attention to this too much e either way. Because what happens is that they don't own more than 51% of Constellation, I mean, of uh, Canopy, folks, okay? But they are controlling, they're controlling interest in it, okay? Because of the fact of the, uh, this the CEO of Canopy now is a Constellation guy. Okay, so what happens here? This thirty-one million has to do a mock to market of the stock. That's how this goes. So let's pitch the Canopy's trading at fourteen twenty-five. So pitch it now that Canopy goes back up to uh, twenty dollars. You know, next quarter. Well, all of a sudden sure. that thirty-one million is going to turn into a you know thirty-one million profit. That's that's how this goes, accounting wise, folks. So that. I, my point more than anything is that if you want to get in the pot business, this is the way to get in the pot business. My, my take on it. Because guess what? It's not going to hurt Constellation if that goes to zero. Not that it's going to. It's just, no, right. Yeah. That's, that's a, a right. risky investment that they've made. But right. in, in terms of the context of the size of their business and if it ever does to come to fruition, I mean, they're already a you know, distribution powerhouse in the alcohol, wine, and spirits right. business. So. It's, it's definitely... Um, I would say they're very um, experienced at that yeah. business because it's the yes. it's the vice business, right? Yeah, I mean that's the bottom yes, line, exactly, right? Exactly, build yeah. a brand, sell it, you know, totally. Right, totally. So let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here. Let's see what we got. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, let's go look Planetier first, okay? Yeah. You know, so what's going to get interesting here? I was bringing this up yesterday on my show, Tom. I get a feeling that this is going to be like a monster day trading stock. And the reason, it, this will take, you know, maybe take three or four weeks or something. The reason I'm saying it, it's very unusual when you get like, you know, they went public at 750, it's trading 938. 
when you get a, a stock that you know that this is a decent company, right? Yes. And you're only trading like under $10. I think they did this on purpose. You know what I'm saying? That that they... Yep. they IBD used to have a section, right? 10 stocks under 10 bucks yes. or something like that. Yes. Those people love this. I mean, that, that talk about going to the wayside, but um, people still love them. Exactly. People love penny stocks, man, which is really playing with fire. But, you know, it proves to the point. Yeah, they, they like the ability to buy a lot of shares at a cheaper price. Right. And now we have zero commission. So that's even a whole different ballgame. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I get a feeling that's a stock you're going to want to watch because, you know, the, the bottom line is that uh, once, you know, people start jumping on it, uh, you know, every day. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're probably going to. Could you go into them again, if you could? Yes. Just their, um, their numbers. Do they have their numbers in there? Yet I don't believe they have them up. Let's see. Mo PLTR. OK. Yeah. Because I'm just curious. I mean, I, to your point, like. Yeah, there's no numbers yet. So they're not in there yet, but they do have some legitimate numbers. You know, they have oh, yeah. revenue acceleration growth and all that. They'll be in there, I'm sure, at some point. Um, and there you see, you know, $91 million two-year contract from the Army. The news is flooded with. Uh, right. But they have some um, some contracts. A lot of the times those contracts, some of them top secret that they can't be made public beyond, I think, the dollar amounts as they show up on their balance sheet. Yeah. So, And they were into data mining, folks, when – you know, it was unheard of. So the company's been around for 17 years. So that is a long period of time. I mean, data mining, you know, has been out here. But I would say, you know, we all really got to learn, you know, last, what, seven, 10 years more. You know sure. what I mean? It's and that, again, a direct listing, right? So really, you know, I know you were talking to Dave White last Friday, I think, and you're saying really, you know, it's been around for so long that you have a lot of people that got shares in that company, and this would be an opportunity, one of the first times, to really cash out. You're talking about almost two decades in a company that's massively successful, obviously worth $15 billion as of you know the prices straight net. Exactly. So that speaks to some strength, too, where really they're just coming to market to go public. It's been 20 years, and you, I'm sure you have a lot of people that are you know early no. investors or along the way that have shares. That's right, because what happens here, folks, is that no money goes in their treasury. Right. That, that's how this works, Okay. But the bottom line is that once you become a uh, public company, it opens up the spigot. Now, we talk about open up the spigot. Wait till you see this. Where is this? J.P. Morgan. Wait till you see what J.P. Morgan is going to do. And this is right up my alley, folks, because I was in this business, man. So here we go. Listen to this, man. I didn't read this whole article yet. We've got to get into it. J.P. Morgan wants to help turn airline and hotel loyalty paints points into an asset akin to stocks and con futures. Listen to this, man. The bank is working with Affinity Capital Exchange to let companies turn reward programs into a standardized, exchangeable, exchangeable currency to be traded by institutional investors and used as collateral to raise capital, according to a statement Thursday. Through a partnership, massive loyalty programs can be converted into pieces or reserve points sold to investors like hedge funds or banks. Uh, on the ACE marketplace and later traded on the same venue. What a trip, right? <laughs> yeah. And it, it, you know, you're seeing that these airlines, for instance, took out huge <laughs> loans and used uh, their, that, that as collateral, yes. um, those programs. So they're already, and that's probably where it came from. They said, these airlines, they're already, that's right. you know, monetizing it, collateralizing it, putting it to, to loans. There's no reason why there's not some type of standard, obviously, what they're worth. When used, translates to, and you know, the fees that they have. Um, and there you go. United sold $6.8 in bonds and loans that. backed by their mileage program in June. Um, Delta so, borrowed $9 billion against its frequent wow. flyer program. How's that? And what happens is those programs, they, they generate billions in, in revenue. They um, do. So it's, it's a recurring revenue, you know, and of course that, that's worth a certain, you know, what's the current value of that recurring revenue. It's a pretty simple formula, actually. You know what I mean? In terms of the current value, interest rates, what people are willing to pay for future revenue. And and so it's kind of, it, it makes sense. If it but moves, folks, trade it. Good, kudos to Wall Street. They'll they'll uh, they'll securitize it, take their cut, and, and move on. No doubt, man. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow Industrials uh, up 90, NASDAQ up 97, S&P's up 12 and a half. We'll come right back.
back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006. And like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the Newsletter tab. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 93, NASDAQ's up 107, S&P's up 14, and you know, with, with, <laughs> we're going to start getting some stuff out here. So you just had, uh, this probably just leaked. Well, this leaked about a half hour ago. Um, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told her closest deputies by the phone Thursday morning that she's skeptical of reaching an agreement with Treasury Secretary Mnuchin uh, on another virus-related stimulus package. So uh, bottom line is that we'll see uh, what Mnuchin has to say now. This is going to be, this is going to be quite a day out here, man. <laughs> It is. And, and I think a lot of those differences hinge on the amount of money um, and probably any type of restrictions or something like that that goes to the state um, for aid across the board. And whether that's for schools to open, whether that's for care, whether it's um, for economic stimulus, I think that's a big portion of what they're pretty far apart on. Yes. And, you know, if if in fact uh, this comes down, folks, that, you know, they come out either tonight, tomorrow morning, whatever, I suspect well, we'll see whether it's before the weekend. Uh, if the market figures out that there's going to be nothing until after the election, get out of the way, man. <laughs> you know, because you can just kind of see that the market is a little gleeful and happy. Run, run it up yesterday. You know, in fact, that's what I want to do right now. One second. Hold it. Let's let's I believe this is S&P. I think it just tested its highs of yesterday. And that's all it actually did, which would be pretty wild. Yeah, it did. So the high of yesterday was 33.84, and we made 33.88 today. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's oh, a sign, folks, okay? But that's not that's not a big deal. That, when, you, when you do that, that's that's just not a big deal, man. No. And we'll get some news today because Pelosi's going to want to vote on this tonight. It, it might be right around the close, just like it was yesterday. But they have to wrap up business because Pelosi's going to say, if we don't get a deal done, we're voting. So it can't be too late. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, huge point. Stay right there, folks. Thank you so much for coming up next. And I'm at Mr. Bowser Chapman, Steve Rose, Dave. Wait. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Oh, bam. Look at him. Right.